Hey everybody, the Bong is here, ready to give you a brand new Let's Play! Final Fantasy X-2, the HD remaster version for the PlayStation 4. Alright, so this is the final game out of the 2020 Christmas special, because last year I did do Final Fantasy X. And of course people wanted me to do Final Fantasy X-2. Full disclosure, I have never beaten Final Fantasy X-2. I rented it once, played it for like maybe an hour, and then I just never played it again. And then I wound up getting both Final Fantasy X and X-2 for PlayStation 2 for like $10 or $15 out of EV Games. X-2 was like really dirt cheap by the way. And managing to get two games at once, hey, not a bad deal. But then I never got around to playing it on my own PS2. So I got this off uh, PlayStation Network, which was the HD Remaster Collection. So I figured, now it's time I can finally play this game and finish it. So let's get started. Oh, I can't wait to be content ID'd for this opening cutscene. <laughs> Alright, so judging by the layout, looks like we're in Luka. Oh, this might be a bit loud. YRP, like Yuna, Riku, and the other girl is Pain. So if you ever watched like uh, Eternal Calm, I think it was, that movie that you can watch after finishing Final Fantasy X. You will find out, like, why they're in this situation. Like, why they're suddenly a J-pop band. We could afford this set because our backup dancers are holograms, so we don't have to pay them!
Yeah, even the title screen is considered a block scene for some reason. Here, let me put my voice against the microphone. And I'm not saying words. Hey, give it back already! <laughs> Boys! Want in on this number? Then show me your moves! Think you can keep up? Piece of cake! Alright, time for our first battle. <laughs> And if I remember correctly, the battle system in Final Fantasy X, too, is very different from what it was in Final Fantasy X. There is an active ATB meter now, which you can see there in the lower right. I'll steal for this other goon, why not? Riku has basically been the thief of this group for a long time. If she's been that way since Final Fantasy X, why stop now? Oh, nice, we got a high potion. Luckily, this is a tutorial battle, so you don't have to worry too much. Uh, let's try out Swordplay, shall we? This one might require a little bit of a charge up time. And it inflicts Power Break. Power Break, I believe, will lower strength as well. Okay, she's just gonna keep casting thunder on us. We still have chain attacks, too. Okay, we don't really need to escape, obviously. But sometimes you can do combo attacks. There, we defeated a hologram. I think. I could have danced all night. Sorry! No time for an encore! Oh god, there are guards. I don't think they were happy of, with us interrupting the performance. It's all in the rip. <laughs> oh wow, these guys are actually much weaker than normal. Budget grenade. <laughs> Alright, so we're level 1, size S, whatever that means. I guess more on that later. Because we're still in the tutorial stage anyway. Sphere changes, display... Uh, keep it normal. ATB mode... I'm gonna set it to wait, for now. ATB speed, keep it on normal. Cursor, default. Don't really need vibrations for a game like this. So I'll keep the options... The rest of the way is fine. And we can't go left, because there's invisible walls! I think you'll level up as normal this time, too. Phew. Were you trying something? That's how you get cut off. Okay, so if I remember correctly, this is the port in Luka. I remember having to be around there a couple times. Oh god, there are she-goons now? What great names. And it looks like they cast magic, too. Oh, nice, you get Phoenix Downs from them. They don't even do that much damage, either. In that case, I'm better off stealing as much as I can. Okay, so they don't always have Phoenix Downs. That's lame. That could have saved me a little bit of gill. Oh, come back! Move! I don't think all the encounters are like you just touch them and then you get in the fight. Like, say, a Bravely Default or a Chrono Trigger kind of game. I think it's only in this area it's like that. Don't hold out on me. 
Thanks. Yeah, they don't have much health, obviously. Pain is such a badass with that sword. Hey, you run too fast! You're too slow, little girl. Show's over! <laughs> Youch. This way. <laughs> Parkour with guns. I had to do the smile. This is just like Final Fantasy meet Charlie's Angels. Like, what is this? Alright, logos? Okay, press R1 repeatedly during a lot of time for multiple hits. Oh, I could have done that like uh, during the actual turn. That feels weird. Ooh, an iron bangle. This is the part where you get hurt. Okay, we'll just focus on Lobos. I don't even think that did anything. Why is Ormi spinning? It's dizzying. I don't like it. Okay, so I don't have to worry too much about strategy just yet. I think I'm better off just using a regular attack. Pirouette Pitch! Okay, Logos is down, now it's for me. Can you steal one more item? Let's find out. Nothing to steal, so no. Beautiful. He's got that shield up, so that's a bit annoying. Probably use it to block some attacks. Ooh, we learned Sentinel! Boss. I guess you learn that just by beating them. That's quite enough sniveling, boys. Persistent, aren't you? My grid! You give us back Uni's garment grid right now! Didn't you girls ever learn to share? Give it back. Very well, it's yours. <clears throat> but it won't be yours for long, loves. Oh, great, now I gotta face her, too. Press L1 to access the garment grid and change dress spears. Uh, I guess we can go with this one. Oh, LeBlanc is her name. Take less physical damage until the next turn. Okay, so this pretty much just changes your abilities. It's almost like a job system. Use Darkness Dance to inflict darkness on LeBlanc. Alright, let's do this. Okay, Riku can become a warrior as well. Sure, let's try it out for a bit. I do like that it just changes their attire. Like, those little attention to detail is really neat. So I chop things up and we win. I think I can handle that. It was nice okay. knowing you. Let's see, Pain as a songstress is definitely not gonna be a good idea. Hang on, is she even blinded? I don't think she's been blinded yet. Okay, now she's blinded. 
Uh, maybe I'll throw her back to the thief. I think it would be better for her. Might have to go into options to fix that so you don't have to watch that cutscene every time. I still got nothing more to steal, <laughs> except our hearts. Uh, I, I won't let you off so easily next time. Get back here, Riku. Huh? What? What? Uh, what? Hey. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, the actual Yuna. Mission complete! Oh, now we actually get our experience in our gill. So we got nine potions, two phoenix downs, a couple level ups too. My body just started dancing by itself. I didn't know what was going on. I was frightened. Then, while I was dancing, something happened. You sure looked like you were enjoying yourself. I was. It felt like some other person's excitement just took over. Oh, hey, brother, what's up? That can happen when you use the garment grid. The emotions of the person recorded in the sphere pass to the user. Isn't that dangerous? I can't really say. But it's your invention. I'm just a kid. Luna, I want to see. It'll cost you. Oh, one moment. She's kidding. What? No dance? Ha ha ha! Look sick, TV. Gollings! Doing to the duck! I've completed my latest invention. The creature creator. Use the fiend trap pods invented by Shinra to capture fiends all across Spira and train them as allied creatures for the gold wings. The more fiends you capture and train, the more fascinating tales you will hear about them. Oh no. This is starting to get into Dragon Quest Monsters territory. Capturing monsters. I don't know how I feel about this. This is Pain. I look up to her as a sphere hunter and also as a friend. I still don't know her very well. She's not exactly the talkative type. I heard she joined the Gullwings shortly before I did. Riku doesn't know much about her either. What now? Nothing. I just want to stare at you. What's wrong with that? Okay, so we do have white magic. Well, Riku doesn't. Yuna doesn't have it. Pain doesn't have it. I guess we have to learn the white magic later. Like garment grids like first steps. So this is just a grid with six nodes. You and I, Riku and Pain are currently using this garment grids. Are you sure you want to rearrange its dress spheres? Not really. But if I do. Okay, so I can switch them around. Like for instance, I could probably put this right here if I want to. Do I want to do that? I mean, there's no reason not to, for now. But once I get, like, uh... Other dress spheres, I might just put them in better spots. I don't know if it makes that much of a difference based on where they are. Other than, like, a whole bunch of jobs... Could be more accessible. I think it's possible that... The only way you'd be able to get to Gunner from Warrior... Is if it's just, like, the adjacent node? I don't know if you can move two nodes in one turn. There might be something like that in the tutorial. Alright, let's take a look at your abilities. Hmm, from the looks of things, she's only got 2% of the abilities. I see. So I guess, like, the more you use a particular uh, dress sphere on a character, 
the more skills they can learn? Is that true? Those are just spears. So, of course, there's Gunner, Warrior, Songstress, and Thief. Okay, that's pretty much like all the other dress spears you can get. So, I'm missing 3, 5, 8, 10, 15? Are there only 15 more dress spears I'm missing? That might be it. Obviously, we have no creatures. Oh, and you can assign them to party members as well. Uh, I think we'll go with short. That way you don't have to see that every single time. Can't do much with the Garmin Grid until we get more jobs. Or more dress spears. Right now she's currently Songstress, but I can change it right at the start. Okay, so in the looks of things... Whatever dress spear you put on affects your overall stats. So when you're a songstress, your stats definitely suck. But at the same time, at least you're able to buff and debuff. Your accuracy is way higher too. Actually, not not necessarily. I'll put you back to gunner for now. We do have accessories. Guard against darkness. Raise max HP by 20%. Give you the silver glasses. Increase max HP. I think I'd rather put that on pain to make her more of a tank build. So to speak. Hopefully we can get some more accessories so that way Riku can wear something too. Gotta look out for the good girl. She does her best. Seems like all the primers are gone, no. so I didn't even know all the all bed language Shin yet. An all bed. He's a real whiz kid. Okay, so I'm guessing I gotta come to you for tutorials. Creature creator. Sure, let's view tutorials. I'll explain the creature creator to you. This is the Fiend Arena, a secret base that I created. This is where you put captured fiends into teams and train them. Fiends are reincarnations of humans who couldn't make it to the far plane. My objective is to train fiends and learn the secrets of their fiend tale. Go to Trap Creature to capture fiend. Okay. Then we'll go all throughout Spira. Or Spira, I mean to say. Trap Pod has been supplied, so I guess it means small. I'll explain creature trapping. Set trap pods in areas that seem to be home to many fiends. The trap pods will cleanse the souls of the fiends and turn them into good creatures. There are four types of trap pods in all. Pod S, M, and Pod L correspond to the size of the fiend you wish to trap. Pod SP lets you target a specific species, including humanoids. You can carry up to eight trap pods. You won't be supplied more than eight. Let's try it out by capturing Brother, who just went to Luca. Alright, now we gotta set traps in Luca. Luca traps tracks fiends from all over, but trap pod SPs often don't do the job. With trap pod SPs, you have to specify what fiend species you want to trap. Brother is a humanoid. You can round up trap fiends using R1. Okay, round up. Select an area you, where you set a trap pod. Allow into gold wings? Sure. And I can change his name. Oh my god, look at that tongue. He looks like selling out of the prodigy. I'll keep it as is. The trap pod test was a success! Fiends have varying affinities for each other. When you can't catch a certain kind, try releasing a fiend you've already caught. Oh god, they're gonna make this very complex, aren't they? Develop creatures where you nurture captured fiends. Give items and accessories to fiends to make them grow.
Alright, brother, what do you want? You can use items and accessories to develop creatures. Select creature from the menu. Do I really have that much skill? I hope so. Sadly, I don't. This is a screen where you will develop creatures. Select a creature you want to develop. Man, I wish I had a behemoth. Then choose what you will use to develop the creature. For instance, if you select items, your item inventory will be displayed. In the creature status, you will see parameter changes and added abilities that will result from using a selected item. Currently, the cursor is on Ether, and it shows that they can use, you can use two Ethers to learn the ability of Magicide. Now let's try developing the creature. When you select Ether with the cursor, a confirmation prompt will appear. If you select Yes here, Nash Shorn will learn Magicide. However, Creatures can only learn a maximum of 4 command abilities and 4 auto abilities. If you want them to learn a new ability after reaching the limit, they must be made to forget a current ability. To make creatures forget an ability, select Unlearn from the menu. A cursor will appear on the list of the creature's current abilities. Select an ability with the cursor, and the creature will unlearn that ability. Keep in mind that only abilities that the creature has actually learned can be unlearned this way. Abilities made usable through equipment, etc. are excluded. This concludes the tutorial on developing creatures. When fiends grow, you can learn more about their fiend tail. If you go to creature history, you can see a creature's fiend tail. When fiends level up in battle, their fiend tail level goes up as well. When fiends complete their fiend tail, they can then be unleashed. When a fiend is unleashed, you can see its secret fiend tail ending. After feeling it, viewing its field fiend tail ending, the creature is added to the bestiary. Wow, all these many steps just to go to the bestiary? Damn. We have to try to register every field in Spira into the bestiary. If you want to change the name of a fiend or release it from your surface, go to name creature. If you press R1, you can change the name of creature teams as well. When you release a fiend from your service, its experience and learn abilities will not be recorded, so be careful. To train and level up fiends, have them fight in the fiend arena. Go to fiend arena and have your creatures battle fiend teams that I have personally scouted. The fiend arena has various tournaments and battle simulators. By winning in tournaments, you can receive trap pods as rewards. Try to fight your way through and win every fiend area tournament if you can. Lastly, I'll explain creature battles. This tutorial will teach you how to have creatures you have captured participate in battle. Select party members from the menu. This is the screen where you can add creatures to the battle team. When you open the party member screen, there will be a list of characters and creatures. Select a creature you wish to add to the battle team. Once you select a creature, move the cursor to a team member on the right side of the screen. The selected team member will be switched out with the newly selected creature. The team member switch is now complete. However, keep in mind that creatures come in three sizes. Small, medium, and large. The number of creatures that can be in a battle battle team at any one time. Let me guess. If it's M, I can only have a medium and a small. If it's large, it has to be by itself. That's what I'm guessing. It's restricted to three S-sized creatures. 
N sized creatures are equal to 2 S sized creatures. L sized creatures are equal to 3 S sized creatures. Yep, I called it. If you put one M sized creature into the team, then only one S sized creature can be added on top of that. If you put one L sized creature into the team, yeah, it's gotta be by itself. You cannot add any more members to the battle team. The creature fights alone. By the way, if you select Remove All, all members will be removed from the team. However, at least one creature must be selected for battles to take place. After selecting team members for battle, And using circle to return to the menu. Choose a dress sphere for Nashorn. Oh god. If there are any creatures that are not equipped, the equipment screen will automatically come up. If you take creatures that are not yet equipped with dress spheres, I really want to picture a Nashorn wearing a songstress dress. And equip dress spheres on them like so. The setup for your creature battle team is complete. Just like regular characters, creatures must always be equipped with a garment grid and a dress sphere. Up to two accessories can be equipped on creatures. Creature abilities and parameters will change according to the dress spheres they have equipped, but they are not able to spear change. Creatures can equip the same items characters can, but... The same item will have different effects when equipped on a creature than when equipped on a character. You can check the effects of equipment on creatures through help messages. This concludes the tutorial on creature battle teams and equipping creatures. I'll explain creature behavior! Oh my god, this is a long ass tutorial. Friendly creatures will appear in a circle of light. Creatures make their own decisions and battles. Creatures that just join you will use commands rather freely and randomly. Practice makes perfect, as they say. Creatures will grow smarter as they fight, learning which commands are optimal. Next, I'll explain cheering and fleeing. You can't directly control creatures in battle, but you can influence creature actions in battle by cheering them on. Cheer gauge the gauge at the top left is the cheer gauge. The cheer gauge shows the creature's motivation with star symbols and its mood as well. The creature's motivation goes up by pressing R3 and goes down by pressing L3. When motivation is high, creatures are more aggressive and do more damage. But they take more damage as well and their evasion goes down, so be careful. When motivation is low, creatures do less damage. But they take less damage, evade more attacks, and even heal allies more often. When all motivation stars are gone, the creature will flee the battlefield. If the battle isn't going well, it may be better to have it flee. Finally, I explain abilities and leveling up. Just like regular characters, creatures level up and grow stronger by gaining experience in battle. In addition, they sometimes learn abilities after being attacked. The abilities that can be learned varies by creature, and are learned when the creature is subjected to a related attack. For example, creatures that can learn Faraga may do so when they are attacked with a fire spell. There are a whole lot of abilities learned through related attacks. So the best way to learn a lot of abilities is to fight many different kinds of enemies. Creatures can not only learn command abilities this way, but passive abilities as well. Also, creatures are able to forget abilities they have learned, but they can remember them again if they are attacked in the same way. If you need basic battle advice, talk to me and go to Shinra's Guide to Everything, then select the Battle Beginner's House. This concludes the Creature Battles tutorial. Are we done here? This concludes the Creature Creator tutorial! Thanks for listening! Thanks for giving me a trap pod S and a trap pod M and a trap pod L, and that's it. That was a lot of talking.
Wait a minute, where do I go to save my game? That's what I like to know. Still analyzing. Buddy and brother are old friends. Buddy says he was aboard Sid's airship with us two years ago. When I told him I didn't remember, he seemed disappointed. You received the key item, Albed Primer 21. Oh my god, I gotta collect all those again? Yuna, has my talking gotten better? He really has improved quite a bit. He told me that he practiced, just so that he could talk with me more. Learning Albed. Brother and the Albed race speak their own unique language. Yuna has managed to pick up a little Albed during her travels with the Gullwings, but she still has a ways to go. Go digging for Albed primaries in the Bicanel Desert. Expose yourself to the language as much as possible, and you'll be proficient in no time. And I got the key item Albed Primer 19. And Albed Primer 3. And Albed Primer 27. No, oh, that's 17. Okay, so that'll translate Let's certain go! letters. Party! Ah, 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 party! Ah, ah! And the Festivalist Dress Spear. Okay, well, that was pretty fun. Let's go back to First Steps. And what is Festivalist? Every day is a festival. Abilities vary by character. Alright, I'll put this right here for now. We'll probably have to get around to, like, deciding what goes on once we get our seventh dress here. For now, we're pretty good with what we have. Every day is a festival with this dress here. Everyone can use fireworks, but they all have their own ways of celebrating. Passion is the festivalist's greatest weapon. Interesting. I know everything. Do you have anything else to tell me? Oh god, there's treasure spears, the bestiary, the dossiers. I don't know want to do all that right now. Can I just find the spot to save the game? Ah, here we go. The save spear. Access the save spear to fully restore the party's HP and MP and cure all status ailments. Select save to save your progress and board airship to return to the Celsius. Yeah, I would very much like to save the game, please. Oh man, we still got a lot to learn about this game before we go adventuring. I don't want to do like all tutorials on this one episode, do I? Ah, screw it, we'll do it. I know everything. So at least we'll have episode 2 be a little bit more action. Uh, Battle Beginner's House, Garment Grids, Learning New Abilities. Let's try that one. During battles, you and our team can learn abilities unique to each dress sphere. You decide which abilities each character will learn next. First, select abilities from the menu. Next, select the character that you want to learn an ability. The ability screen appears. Now you can get done selecting an ability to learn. The left side of the screen shows a list of the party's dress spheres. The percentage to the right of each dress sphere indicates the character's mastery level of that dress sphere's abilities. Let's select a dress sphere. I guess we'll go with Gunner. A list of the dress sphere's abilities appears. Abilities marked with master such as attack have already been learned. The numbers to the right of unlearned abilities are ability points. The number on the right is the total AP needed to learn the ability. The number on the left is the current AP learned. Once a character earns the required AP, she acquires the ability. The ability currently being learned is highlighted, as with Hotshot below. While Yuna has the Gunner Dress Spear equipped, AP earned in battle will be applied towards learning Hotshot. Yuna still needs 18 more AP before she can use Potshot. You can only learn Gunner abilities like Potshot while fighting with the Gunner Dress Spear. AP obtained with other Dress Spears won't advance Gunner abilities. There are many abilities besides the ones shown here. 
new abilities appear on the list as they become available. As mentioned earlier, it's entirely up to you to decide how to apply AP. Select the ability you want to learn first. Just move the cursor to the ability you wish to learn, and press X to select it. AP earned in battle will be applied towards this ability. This system kind of reminds me of Lord of the Rings The Third Age. Once this ability is learned, AP will automatically be applied toward a new unlearned ability. So even if you don't select a new ability manually, AP earned in battle is never wasted. You can easily access the abilities of other Dread Spears by pressing L1 and R1. Now let's try selecting the ability we want AP applied to when using the Songstress Dress Spear. We select Sleepy Shovel to be learned next. So now AP learn earned as a Songstress will be applied to Sleepy Shuffle, and the AP learned as a Gunner will be applied to Pot Shot. One last thing. Pressing L1 and R1 at this screen will cycle through your party members. This concludes the Abilities tutorial. Glossary of Spira... I don't really care about that. Creature Creator tutorial, I don't want to go back to that either. Using Garment Grids, I can probably learn that as I go. I know everything. What about treasure spheres? Select a sphere you like to play back. Oh wait, that's movies. No, I don't want to deal with that. I know everything. What about the dossiers? Oh, that's just learning about people. Hmm. I know everything. Yeah, 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 I, I know you know everything. Let's go to the creature creator. Maybe I should start trapping some creatures. Actually, do I have any creatures developed? Oh, brother. Let's develop you using items. You'll learn life this way. Do I want you learning life? I guess we can teach you life. Raises HP by one as well. And don't really want to use accessories. Like that. Let's try trapping some creatures. Okay, we got a whole lot of places that we can work with. Let's see what we can trap on Besaid Island. We'll put a small one right here. Try rounding up. I got a salad. There we go. Trapping is completed. We only got 1% of creatures, by the way. Now, uh, we'll set a trap pod. Uh, let's go with Kilika Island. We'll put a medium one there for now. Ooh, a Proto Chimera! Sure. That's pretty cool, you can actually name these creatures. Okay, looks like uh, more of the uh, area is like revealing itself on the map. I'm gonna go with a large one, this same island. It says Chapter 1. So this game is broken down by chapters? Ooh, a flame dragon! Damn! I didn't think anything like that was on Besaid Island. Uh, maybe one more trap pod. 
He say it again. And round you up. A plan Azul. And I think that'll be it. Good to know you're supplying me with more trap pods. Alright, should I start developing these other creatures? Um, probably not. You got a nice amount of abilities now. I don't think we have much on the creature history. Our do we? wings explode! Creature analysis failed. Well, it is early. It's not really much of a team right now. If I go arena, does it go straight to tournament? Uh, yeah, I think it probably does, but I can also use the Battle Simulator. We'll come back to that. So yeah, that's just a lot to take in, and this is only Episode 1. But we'll give it a little bit of time. It'll take some getting used to... <coughs> It'll take some getting used to, but we'll get there. Who knows, I might want to take some time between episodes to get a better understanding of some of the things you'll learn in this. But I think this is a good ending for our first episode. So next part, we'll go continue on with the game. See everyone, thanks for watching.